So here I'm uh, oxidizing uh, polysulfides. Uh, it's uh, sodium hydroxide was used to uh, solvate uh, elemental sulfur. Um, this creates uh, sodium thiosulfate as well as a number of uh, polysulfides. And polysulfides uh, readily oxidize to thiosulfates. So what I've been doing um, is the long process of just bubbling air through. Um, since I've become a little bit impatient about that, it does work. Um, which I can show in a moment here, but uh, for now I'm I've got manganese dioxide here uh, and hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it's about 12% uh, uh, solution here. Um, as it drips, it creates a nice steady stream of O2, and this should hopefully work a little bit better. Um, it might also control the acidity since it's pure O2 rather than a mixture of air, which uh, you know small amounts of carbon dioxide can slightly acidify the solution and over time the pH will drop enough so that hydrogen sulfide is formed and elemental sulfur uh, will start precipitating out of solution. Um, I've had that problem a number of times, but uh, as long as I keep the pH elevated, uh, I like to keep it between 11 and 13. Um, right now the pH of the solution is right around 11 so I'm getting uh, I, I think like a pH of 10 is, is about my cutoff point because any lower than that uh, I seem to get uh, a small, uh, small amount of hydrogen sulfide formation um, and uh, I'll get a noticeable amount of uh, elemental sulfur that forms at the bottom. Uh, so what I've done here is I've gotten a fish tank uh, air stone which seems to help out a little bit. I've been using this uh, glass tube for um, just blowing straight air. Uh, I used it before uh, with oxygen. Um, it creates really small bubbles. It's, it's a nice small opening there so I mean it, it works. Sorry it was never really in focus. But anyhow, uh, I just wanted to show this setup. Um, I've also got a little experiment here on the side. Uh, this one was uh, hydrogen peroxide. I added sulfur to it. And over the course of three or four days now, um, I believe I created this on the 24th. Uh, today is the 27th. So um, anyhow, yeah, it uh, you don't have to boil the sodium hydroxide and sulfur in solution. Um, so that creates some possibilities where you can actually use glassware and not have to worry about the sodium hydroxide etching the glass um, and possibly completely destroying the glass and, and leaking everywhere. So um, yeah, this, this little experiment's been fun. Um, I'll show... Uh, Let's see here. I'm trying to get the lid off here one-handed. Sorry about the camera work, as per usual. So this is uh, the amount of sodium thiosulfate I've created uh, previously. Um, I would have much more yield if it hadn't been for uh, some accidents. Uh, plus, you know, uh, times when uh, the solution dropped to uh, about neutral. Uh, it uh, you know started to produce hydrogen sulfide and elemental sulfur uh, in solution, so uh, you know that's going to obviously decrease yield. But hey, at least you can reuse the sulfur. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, it, this is what I've got going on. It's just uh, I've been bound and determined to make this uh, method of creating sodium thiosulfate work. Uh, it's definitely not a cheap route to obtain sodium thiosulfate. Um, the reason I'm wanting sodium thiosulfate is uh, for my pyrite synthesis uh, that I'm doing in a um, hydrothermal vessel uh, or my autoclave. Um, my initial tests on the first run uh, seem to be positive that I did actually create iron disulfide. Uh, it's not magnetic. It does not react with uh, hydrochloric acid uh, 
I don't know. I've, I've done a, a couple other tests with it, um, but uh, there's no way that I can actually uh, visibly see like any like marcasite or pyrite uh, crystals. Um, they're way too small. A anything that has been created is definitely uh, nanoscopic. Uh, I've used my microscope um, and the, the solution. Uh, actually, here's uh, just a tiny bit of <laughs> what I had created. It's any of the clumpiness that you see is just, you know, tons and tons of particles that are grouped together. But uh, this will go right through one micron glass fiber filter. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I use the uh, ferrous sulfate and sodium thiosulfate and mix that together uh, with an abundance of sulfur. Um, that's what I did last time. I, I added some extra sulfur, actually. I just added the solution as this uh, because you do actually uh, want the polysulfides uh, so that way you've got the excess of sulfur reacting with the iron. Um, so that way you get uh, fair, you know, iron disulfide. But anyhow, if you're looking to make sodium thiosulfate for a little experiment, uh, this is a, a way to do it. You can either boil the sodium hydroxide, like a concentrated aqueous solution, uh, about 50%. And then, uh, so say, uh, I don't know, say like four grams of sodium hydroxide in 10 milliliters of water and I'm sorry, yeah, two grams. Two grams of sodium hydroxide in 10 milliliters of water and four grams of sulfur. Um, you can add more sulfur uh, because anything that's uh, in excess will end up precipitating out as elemental sulfur. Uh, you can just add in a little bit of more sodium hydroxide to increase pH and then you have to oxidize it. You can let it sit out forever, you know, months and let it uh, oxidize just by sitting in the air. Um, or you can bubble air through it, um, uh, bubbling oxygen uh, through it through using hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide works uh, rather well. I got a, a crystal clear solution. I mean, it looked just like water. So um, yeah, I'm going to continue to let this go. It's already been going for, uh, I think this has been going for four days now, just regular air. I just started uh, pumping the O2 through it through my oxygen generator uh, maybe about 10 minutes ago. So uh, I'll do another uh, video update uh, to show where I'm at and hopefully uh, this one goes well. I'm probably going to stop with these uh, experiments uh, creating sodium sulfide. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not sodium sulfide, sodium thiosulfate. Uh, just because I bought a three pound bag of it off eBay, which should be arriving any day now. Plus I bought this the other day, which is, uh, it's a good percentage of sodium thiosulfate. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking it might be like 30% uh, sodium thiosulfate or maybe 60%. I, I don't remember. Um, I had to look up the MSDS info on this. Uh, there's several chlorine removers, uh, at, pet stores but this one was the only one I could find that actually had a good amount of sodium thiosulfate so anyhow that's what I've been up to um, like I said I'll uh, do an update hopefully it'll be a nice clear solution or uh, I'll show the crystals that I've made uh, I'll probably try to do uh, just a quick video with uh, the clear solution if I ever get to that point and that's it anyhow thanks for watching Bye.